So if you're gonna be serious about bait fishing in the surf, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to buy and invest in is a good sand spike. Now those little PVC ones you can get, they're pretty much worthless. This one here, a good sand spike is gonna be bigger than a, uh, well, how old are you now? Six. Six, it's gonna be bigger than a six year old. So this is my heavy duty sand spike, whether I'm fishing for sharks or I'm chunking for stripers. And this one, as you can see, it's got a little bit of a curve to it. Didn't come like that. That's from when I had this in the sand spike and a reel without a bait feeder feature on it. And a shark came along, was hitting the rod. The rod was secure. The sand spike was secure. It took a little bit of a curve, but it, oh, you know, it kept my rod from going into the surf. So I know a lot of serious surf fishermen say you should never put your rod in a sand spike but that's just not the reality when you're shark fishing or you're chunking or if you wanna fish multiple rods, nothing wrong with getting a sand spike. Just make sure you get the right one. Otherwise, you're gonna watch uh, your favorite surf outfit go right into the, uh, into the waves. So we're gonna put this one into the surf right now. And to weave for this one, you could get a rubber mallet and jam them in like that. I've never had problems just kind of working it into the sand like that. It's got that little V on it. It's gonna dig itself right in. I'm gonna do, I wanna get maybe 18 inches, two feet of this sand spike into the sand. And then give it a little test like that. That's not gonna go anywhere. I'll just tamp down the sand around it. And the other advantage of a big, tall sand spike like this is when the rod's in it, your rod tip is now a little bit higher. It's gonna keep the line off the waves, which is gonna keep your bait in place. It's gonna keep it stationary without the effect of the waves pushing it around a little bit. So the more of your line you can keep off the water, the better that bait's gonna sit, the better it's gonna fish. So let's go, uh, let's get our rod rigged up and get our third rod fishing. So whether you're fishing for sharks or striped bass with bait in the surf, the rig's gonna be pretty similar. You know, you're gonna play around with a pound test. You're obviously gonna use some wire leader for, uh, for the sharks. But basically you're gonna have a reel that's got a good line capacity. It's gonna be a long casting reel. This one here is the Daiwa Free Swimmer, which means it has a bait feeder feature. We'll talk about that in a minute but I have it spooled up with 65 pound test braided line. Could probably get away with 50 or 40 on it, but we've got 65 here, we're looking for big game. And you're gonna have a top shot of monofilament on here. So if I was fishing for striped bass, my top shot would probably be 50 to 80 pound test. This one, because it's sharks and because they have that really abrasive skin, this is 125 pound test mono. And I have about, probably about 13, 14 feet of mono top shot on here. Basically, I want enough so that there's less than a wrap on the reel for when I'm going to cast the rod. So I don't want too much of this real bulky mono on the spool when I cast. I want just enough so it's gonna get out there and give me a clean cast with as little friction as possible for the extra casting distance. Now, I have this leader attached to my braided line with an FG knot. You could use an Albright knot. I wouldn't recommend a uni to uni knot, but between the FG and the Albright knot, whichever one you feel most comfortable with, of those slender knots that go through the guides easily, whichever one you feel better at tying, go with that one. So working my way down to my rig, I've got this 13 feet of mono top shot, 130 pound for the sharks. If it was stripers, we were going for 50 to 80. And then I have a fish finder on here. And this is a braid friendly fish finder. They do have them with the larger plastic pieces that are, if you wanted to put them directly on braided line. I don't like going with braided line directly to my bait leader. And that's because I want a little bit of a cushion, not, for, not just for casting those heavy weights. It gives you a little bit of stretch. If I'm throwing six, eight, even 10 ounces sometimes, that little bit of cushion is gonna help make sure I, I cast off less. And two, it gives you a little extra uh, abrasion resistance. Necessary with the sharks, helpful with the stripers, especially if you're in a rocky area or around a jetty, somewhere that, where that bass can get into the rocks. This is gonna hold up to that abrasion a lot better than, uh, than just straight braided line. So I have that fish finder on there. I'm gonna clip my sinker onto that in a minute. I have a bead between my fish finder and my knot. Now, that bead is designed to protect the knot. So when you're casting, when it's out there swimming around, you have that banging against the bead, which is gonna cushion it. It's not gonna just slam into the knot, per potentially undo the knot. Then I have a barrel swivel here, and I have a, a pretty short, I'd say that's only six, maybe tops eight inches length of wire. And the reason, I have that that short is because when I go to cast, I want it to be a compact package. I want it to be as aerodynamic as possible. So if you go down to the outer banks where casting distance is an art form and you need to go and really reach that outer bar to get red drum or, or when the stripers go down there, uh, the stripers, 
they're fishing leaders that are only about that long, maybe an inch. They have the sinker right on top of the bait. Once this is in the water, you know, and it's fishing, that sinker doesn't even occur to the fish. It doesn't matter if it's that close. There's no stealth element there. The fish is looking at the chunk. That sinker might as well just be another rock sitting on the bottom. So a short leader is going to help you cast further. It's not going to helicopter the way, say, a 24 or 30 inch leader would. Now, if I was striper fishing, again, 80 pound test, mo uh, excuse me, 80 pound test fluorocarbon, I would like in that situation. Since we're sharking, I've got wire that I haywire twisted to a barrel swivel and then to my big 10 knot circle hook right here. I'm going to put an eel on this. I'm going to put a six ounce sinker on this one. We're going to cast it out there and then we're going to wait for our bite. This is one of my favorite sinkers for the surf, for sandy beaches. This is a, like a, I've heard it called a frog tongue sinker, a wedge sinker. And basically that's going to dig into the sand like that. You have a real kind of aerodynamic uh, shape to it. And then you have this part where it's going to bury itself in and resist getting plucked out of the sand by the waves or current action. I actually really like that style of sinker. Pyramid sinker's fine. Um, in some cases, if you were in mud, there's also Sputnik sinkers. There's a lot of different sinker shapes you can choose from based on the, uh, the terrain that you're fishing. But for this, it's basically a sandy kind of gravel bottom out in front of us. Frog's tongue sinker should be good. You know, when I leave, when the rod's being transported, I leave the sinker off it. The sinker, all it's going to do is slam into the rod, could damage it. So you leave it off there until you're ready to fish to the last minute. Hook that right there, go get my, my dead eel and get it rigged up and ready to fish. Fresh dead eels are one of the favorite brown shark baits. One, they've got a great scent out there. Everything loves to eat an eel. Anything in salt water loves to eat eels. But the real advantage to it is that this is going to stay on the hook much better than your conventional chunk baits. So if I had a chunk of bluefish or bunker out there, I would be losing, I'd be going through a lot of bait as crabs came and uh, picked away at the bait. With the eel, eels have a much tougher skin than your, uh, your typical fin fish. So that's going to resist being picked apart by the crabs, still sending a lot of scent out there for the sharks to home in on. And I'd say most of the brown sharks you hear about being caught up here in Massachusetts, at least, fall to, to, uh, to dead eels. So I've got one more step that I forgot to do so far, and I'm going to pinch that barb down. Brown sharks are a protected species. I really enjoy catching and releasing them, but I want to make those releases as clean and easy as possible. So I'm going to pinch down that barb, I'm not worried about a, a, the hook backing out. As long as I keep the line tight and I keep the rod bent, that hook shouldn't back out even with no barb on there. So I'm going to crush that barb, send this out there, and uh, begin what hopefully won't be a too long wait for a uh, shark to come swimming by. All right, so I just cast and I'm engaging the bait feeder function on this Daiwa free swimmer. And I have my, uh, my lovely assistant here is handing me the glow stick. Now when you're night fishing and you're leaving the rods and sand spikes, a glow stick is gonna help you detect that bite. Part of the reason is it's, it's gonna give you a few ways to hear it. You have the bait uh, feeder on, it's going to click, and that does a couple things. One, alerts you to a bite. Two, keeps that rod from getting wrenched out of the rod holder and in there, and helps the fish bite it, and it doesn't feel anything, doesn't feel resistance, so the fish is less likely to drop the bait. So that's why they call it the free swimmer from Daiwa. That's their bait feeder reel, and it's relatively new this year. So, and when I do get a bite, all I have to do is take a crank of the reel handle just like that, so you have the secondary drag, which is that bait feeder drag. When I get a bite, when I feel like he's got it in, in his mouth, I will reel, that engages my fighting drag, and then I'm gonna battle the fish on what's gonna be a much tighter drag there. This glow stick I'm putting on there, rather than tape one to the rod, I like to take these glow sticks, these are kind of the, like the ones you would wear on a necklace, um, a little bit bigger, easier to see than the smaller thin ones that they actually sell for this. This I picked up at Walmart, and what I'm gonna do is I cut the plastic loop right there, and that allows me to hook it right onto one of the top guides. I don't like the tip top, but one of the top three guides there. And then that gives me a big, impossible to ignore signal for when I'm getting a bite. Sometimes if it's a real aggressive bite, that'll just drop right off. Otherwise you'll see it uh, wailing around out there. And that alerts me to the bite if I'm not hearing the bait runner. So right now my bait feeder looks a little bit loose. 
for, uh, for the wave conditions we have here, for the current conditions. When I want to tighten it up, there's a little knob here that allows me to adjust the pressure for this bait feeder. Now, I'm tightening it up a bit. It's tight enough now that the waves aren't going to take it out, but it's loose enough that if a shark comes by, picks up that bait, he's still not going to feel it. He's going to carry that until I have a chance to get over here and, uh, and plant that hook in him. You gotta hope you get a bite before bedtime, right? Yeah. So which one do you think is gonna get the bite? You think green, pink, or blue? Blue already got one bite. Pink got a bite. Green, it's its first cast. It's just getting out there. Which one do you think? I don't know. All of them pretty much have the same bait, so any of them can be that one. I guess that's the logical answer. Oh. <laughs> is that your expert opinion? I think green, because it's my favorite color. And because I'm the one that cast that. Up, oh, green, green, green! And he went right down the line. We had one rod get bit, eel ripped off. Another rod bit, eel uh, bit in half. And then as we were resetting the bait, he spotted this one. So bait runner did its job there. Fish, by the time I got to the rod, he was just ripping out line. So I locked up on the drag. He didn't even know we were there. There he goes. He took a, a hellacious run to start and then kind of settled in. Unfortunately, I would have loved my kids to be here, but they, uh, the sharks didn't come out till after their bedtimes. Oh. He's running straight down the beach. And there is a barbless hook on this, so it's gonna be super important to keep the line tight, which can be a little difficult when we have all this grass on the line too and he's changing direction, so you get a big bow in the line. So just wanna keep, make sure you keep a good bend in that rod, a tight line to the shark. Cheech, you have the D-hooker? I'll go get it. That's it, you're here with a bunch of buddies. All work together when you get one on the line. Cheech is gonna get the, uh, the D-hooker, and that's gonna help us make sure we get that shark back in the water quickly. It's gotta be close. Took a, <laughs> that, first, that first run, dude, he was pretty good. Yeah. He's close now, he just changed direction on us. Right here. There's what's left of the eel. Just saw a flash of tail there. So sometimes, whether it's a shark or a striper, you get to this point in the fight, as it gets closer, you're pulling as much up with the rod. If you got a long surf rod, you're pulling up instead of this way. So what's, what becomes more effective is that fish gets close. Rather than going closer to it and pulling his head up, that's not gonna work. You wanna pull him out. So I'm gonna have a better chance of getting him into range, backing up like this and reeling down, keeping a lower rod angle. So my effort, my force of, of pull on that fish is putting him toward the beach. It does me no good if I'm lifting his head up like this. That's gonna make the fish freak out and it's not gonna move him forward as much as I need to. So this fish is just right outside the breaker. Oh, he just freaked out right there. Uh -oh. All right, you're right. Ah! Ah. 
All right. All right, man. Beautiful female brown. That You got that D-hooker? Yep. yep, it's right here. I got it, I got it. Circle hook, doing its job right in the corner of the mouth. Out, just like that. Cheech, man, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll yeah. take her back out. Beautiful female. <laughs> Beautiful female brown. Just gently get her out, back. Point her head toward the ocean, not toward my feet. Come on, girl. Thank you. Uh, 